Now you'll notice that your uh, frame came with these little standoffs, these little standoffs for a uh, like a flight controller. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take those two standoffs. <clears throat> that's what those are called, standoffs. And we're going to remove these little nuts here on the front of our um, of our flight controller stack here, and then we're going to thread on these standoffs right here. Right here. We're going to put that one on that side, this one on this side. And of course, you know, all this kind of stuff is totally optional. I mean, or totally up to you on, you know, how you want to configure stuff, but I think this is going to work out pretty well. We're going to take our video transmitter here, and I'm not going to put the wires directly under it, but kind of in, in front of it because I want to make sure that there's kind of a gap underneath here. And then we're going to take these nuts and then tighten them down uh, on, or we're going to rethread them on here on these on these standoffs. So we're going to tighten down the video transmitter to these standoffs. Now for the camera, you'll notice that your camera comes with some extra hardware. And one of those pieces of hardware is this little guy, the uh, this little well, it's basically just a spacer, and this is going to go. Let me disconnect this, and it'll make it easier to work with the camera. It's going to go on the camera. Well, does it matter which way? I don't think it matters which way. It's going to go just like that, and we're going to screw these little screws into these two holes on the side of the uh, of the camera here. Screw, screw those in there um, nice and snug just like that and this is just going this is just to give the camera enough thickness to fit properly into the, uh, the the side plates which we're actually about to mount right now so we're gonna take two more screws from our camera accessory and or, or you know the screws that came with our camera and then these are the side plates now the side plates you'll notice uh, they have these two notches here, like this, and these notches go into our top plate. There's our top plate here. These notches go into the top plate like this, okay? And then this bottom notch is going to go into here. So it's going to sit on there like this. So the, the flat part, the flat part here is going to point forward, point forward. Right? We're actually going to need like four four screws, and you could attach this just straight through, uh, straight through this hole, this center hole right there. But I don't I don't know if I really prefer that method because if you hit if it's not tight enough and you and you crash, your camera's going to drop down, and uh, I'm not a big fan of that. So instead, I'm going to mount it to the, those two holes there. You see those those two holes? See how see? So I'm going to mount it through that small hole. And then this 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 little cutout right here, this little slot. So I'm going to show you what that looks like here. So make sure our camera is pointed right side up. So you can see there's a little arrow pointing up. That's the uh, upward direction. And then we're going to take our screws here, and well, let me put it in, let me put it through this hole first. Put our driver on there, and then we're going to screw it into this top this top hole on the spacer just like that so now you see we have this little <clears throat> it actually it, I don't think it's meant to do this but it lines up pretty well uh, it, it uh, lines up right there with that hole and that's where we're gonna put our screw and this way we can adjust the camera angle so we'll just go ahead and, and, and tighten it down at the at the smallest angle pretty much as, as right right about there and we'll do the same on the other side. When we have it in our frame, this is what it's going to look like, just like that. And I think that's that's pretty much just about perfect. If you if you if you really want to fly it with zero tilt, um, you can just uh, you know adjust it, use different holes. But I like it like this. Okay, now is a good time to uh, put our standoffs in place. Um, so we are going to put them. 
a, well, it's a little awkward. We've got some stuff hanging around, but I feel like they'd be in the way if we put them in earlier. So uh, we're going to put the standoffs all along the frame here. We're just going to put a screw down there and just uh, just do finger tight for now. I'm going to put in all the standoffs for our top plate. And we'll go back and tighten these. So tighten these ones. And we'll tighten these up later once we get our top plate on. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in our camera here. You can keep these side plates a little bit loose. Um, that will help kind of fit everything together. We want our OSD cable to be kind of... We don't want to have it dangling out, but we want it accessible so that we can grab it and connect our uh, OSD um, little menu button selector thing. So we'll just leave that untangled and just kind of right there for now. Let's get ourselves some uh, pliers here and tighten down our antenna. And we're, I'm going to hold on to the, uh, the antenna side of the connector and the, the actual VTX side. And we're just going to give them a little, a little just tighten them up, tighten them up. They don't need to be super duper tight, but they need to be really snug. And you don't really want, you don't want the antenna to be able to rotate as far as the actual, the actual uh, cable. You don't want it to be able to rotate when it's tightened down. And then we can just add this little, add this little, uh, this little nut here to kind of help lock it in place, a little lock nut. Boom, just like that. And that should not go anywhere. So now I'm thinking we'll run it something like this. Okay, before we put on the top plate, let's go ahead and uh, zip tie. I'm going to put a zip tie around this standoff to the, uh, the XT60 uh, cable here for our battery. And I'm just going to run it um, sort of around under the connector here and around the standoff like this. And it's going to tighten that down. Not, it doesn't have to be like super tight, but we want it to stay in place. We don't really want to cut into the wires though. So just keep that, keep that in mind. So it looks something like that. There we go. So let's go ahead and put our top plate on. Um, I'm going to actually run this little guy because we're going to need it in a little bit to adjust the uh, OSD settings. Just going to wiggle all of this right on there. There we go. Put that in place. Then we'll put a couple screws in place just to hold the top plate. There we go. So now our top plate is held in place. We'll put the rest of the screws in in a little bit so we can get a better idea of where we want to put our antenna. All right. Now there, there may actually be a better way of doing this. And so maybe you can find a better way to do this. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zip tie the... Uh, the antenna right about here. And if I can kind of get it to sort of lock into these kind of cutouts, that would be ideal. So I'm gonna get a little zip tie. Let's go through here like this, around here, I think. That should, that should help. It might take more than one zip tie, but uh, let's try this. Let's start tightening this down. So I want to get right about there, I think. Let's see if that's no, that kind of it's kind of holding it in place, but I don't know if it's really tightening down as much as I want it to. Now that's pretty good, actually. That's that's pretty good. There's a little rotation though. I'd prefer it if it was if it didn't rotate at all, because we, we the, what we want to try and do is keep the uh, keep the antenna from from flipping over in a crash and getting in the way of our propellers. But this is actually pretty good. I might, I think I'm gonna add another zip tie right here, actually, right there. I'm not really concerned about that. I think that's gonna be a pretty good spot for the antenna. So that's what it looks like. It's tightened down just like that. But again, if you find something that works better, um, definitely go with that. But that's, I think that's gonna work pretty well and it should have, should provide us with some room for our uh, receiver. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trim these, but I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to trim them and I'm going to leave enough room so that I can get a pair of pliers on them. Um, if I need to, at least for now, until I'm sure that I, I want them to be in exactly this spot and everything's working good. Now let's attach our receiver. We're going to pretty much do it in the same way. 
I'm going to put the flat side of the receiver on the top of here, and I'm just going to go ahead and kind of twist these wires. I'm going to kind of twist the wires so that they kind of curl up on themselves and don't, uh, they don't, you know, flop out of the, out of the frame. They should be pretty well protected like this. So I'm just going to run a zip tie around. And, you know, you can always, you know, undo the zip ties and play around with it and, you know, try out different, different ways of uh, configuring everything until you get, get to where you, <clears throat> where you're satisfied with it. So we'll just tighten this down right about there. I want the antennas to be able to stick out as much as possible, really. So we'll just tighten that down. Okay, now we're going to want to add a couple uh, zip ties for our antennas to kind of mount our antennas. So well, I think what I'm going to do is I think we'll use these small ones. I think this should this should work. And um, I'm going to do we're going to do one going this way and then one going vertical. So one one going straight back. And the idea is if it's straight back, it should be out of the way of the propellers. So the pro propeller should not even be able to reach uh, it in case this does get like knocked down here. So uh, let's see what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it through here like this. I think this will work. And if you if you need to change something to make it work for yours, do it. I'm going to tighten this guy down. Good and tight. And I want to make sure it sticks out kind of backwards, backwards facing. Let's see if I can get this tight enough because I don't want it to wiggle around. There we go. That's what I want. I want it tight like, like this. So it, it won't really wiggle around. It's really tightened down and it's pretty much sticking straight out. And then the other one I'm going to have stick straight up. So I'm actually going to put it through like this. And then run it through here. And then I am going to have this one oriented vertically like this. So something like that. It's not quite not quite totally straight, but that's uh, that's totally fine now. Okay, and then so we'll put this antenna going straight back like this, and then this antenna is going to go up in a, in a vertical orientation like this. And that should be good because this way, no matter w which way the quad is, is tilted or, or, or whatever, it should have, we should have good reception uh, from our, to our transmitter. So I'm going to take some heat shrink tubing, and if you don't have heat shrink tubing, you can just use electrical tape. And I'm just going to take the antenna and slide it on here. And I do want to make sure that there's enough slack in the antenna so that I can move this, I can move the zip tie and it won't be pulling on the actual, on the actual uh, antenna connection. It won't actually be pulling on the antenna connection to the receiver if I, if I move the zip tie around. So I, I want to make sure that there's a good amount of slack and then we'll do the other one here, just like that. That should be good, or at least it should do the job. It looks a little, it looks a little funky, but um, that's just how mine turned out. Maybe yours will turn out better. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our lighter, and we are going to heat up the heat shrink. And then being very careful to to make sure that you know where the end of the antenna is, we can trim we can trim the uh, the actual zip tie, but we do not want to cut the antenna. So just to be on the safe side, I'm going to cut right about where the zip tie where the heat shrink ends, just like that. And the same same up here on the top side, so I can see that there's a little there's a little part where the antenna ends, and I'm just going to cut right there, just above it. Okay, guys, I've uh, tightened down all of my uh, top and bottom plate uh, standoff screws, 
and I'm sure that I have everything how I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, trim these zip ties. Um, and I've tightened everything down as much as I can. I'm going to trim them off flush so that they don't stab me because that's not very fun. And trim that one. I've tightened up this one that holds the XC60 in place nice and snug. I'm going to trim that one up as well. All right, one final step here that uh, I would recommend doing is take, we're going to take something like a, like a hotel key card type of plastic, and we're just going to cut little uh, lengths to fit the arms here. And this is going to protect the motor wires in case of a prop strike. Now you don't, you don't absolutely have to do this. It's going to add a little bit of weight, but I think that this is, uh, this is going to be worthwhile. And this is just one way that you can protect your motor wires. So I'm going to uh, get the piece that I cut here and I'm just going to um, take some electrical tape and tape this in place. And I'll tape it down right here. Just like that. There we go. It's nice and tight. So it doesn't take a whole lot of tape. You just want it on there uh, decently tight. And we're going to do that for all four arms. Woo! All right. Congratulations. You are done. You just built a quadcopter, my friend. That is pretty awesome. So we have this, everything soldered in place, everything's tightened down, zip tied, taped, um, and we are almost ready to go. Uh, I mean, we, we still need to uh, configure this on Betaflight and set up our transmitter, and we're going to do that in the next video. Please let me know in the comments if I forgot anything, because this is, I mean, this is my first build video. I'm sure that I m might have left something out, so if there's something I left out, please let me know, and I will put that in the description below, um, or annotate it or something in this actual uh, video. Um, also, let me know, just uh, just give me some feedback. I appreciate your feedback, and uh, stay tuned for the next video, or that's probably already out right now, so go look, like there's probably a link, I'll put a link right there, or it's probably somewhere uh, on, this same, on this page. So go to the next video, I will see you there. We will set up our transmitter and beta flight and get this baby ready for flight. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.